everybody and welcome to hardassetsinvestor.com. I'm Mike Norman, your host. My guest today is Sean Hyman, publisher of Money News Ultimate Wealth Report. Sean, thanks very much for coming on the show. Glad to be here. Now, you focus a lot on commodities and currencies. Mm -hmm. I want to get your commodity outlook. I think you're, you're quite bullish right now, which is sort of in contrast to many of the recent guests I've had on who have sort of pulled back in their you know, enthusiasm for commodities. Uh, and we have seen at least some of the commodity sector stall out. But you remain very bullish, right? I, I am bullish. Uh, there are, are a lot of commodity bears out there right now, and, and they've been uh, you know, right to be so in the months past. But I just believe right now we're at a, a, a phase where commodities are bottoming out. Of course, some have been soaring recently, you know, grains and, right. and the like. That's weather-related. But, and... but, yeah, I think that you're, you're seeing a lot. Broad-based, like the CRB index, I believe, has, has bottomed out and, and, and will uh, head much higher uh, from here. It's consolidating right below a major moving average and about to head higher. Uh, I believe gold, silver, some of these are going to head higher. I believe copper has stabilized silver. Uh, uh, I mean, um, uh, steel has uh, stabilized. And so I believe that you will see an uptick in uh, GDP and some macro numbers in some coming quarters oh. based off of the stability that we're starting to see in commodities because I believe that demand is coming back into commodities at this, at, at this given time. Okay, so that's kind of a contrarian call, the uptick in GDP. Is, is, does that mean globally or in the United States? I would assume... Globally, because I, I, I think both. Um, you know, I, I don't. I don't think that we're going to hit some massive uh, uh, global burst, but I do think that we'll have uh, uh, many rallies and many pullbacks, and, and, and so many, many recessions and, and many uh, boosts to the economy. And I just believe right now that we're on one of those many boosts to the economy that's going to happen. I think you know the the U.S. economy and some parts of the globe will probably be a little bit in limbo for about the next four to eight years. But I do believe we are upon one of those commodity bursts right now stimulated by some global demand. So you see this more as a secular long-term bull run. I mean, historically, if you look at commodities, the pattern has been, and this goes back well over 100 years, that you get these sort of cyclical uh, bursts, using your term, mm -hmm. that we've seen, but then prices tend to come back down towards an equilibrium level. But uh, the the recent trend in commodities in the past seven or eight years, it looks more like a, a sustained trend. That's what you are saying, right? To me, it is. And, and to me, when you have pullbacks like you've had over the last couple of years in commodities, honestly, to me, that's healthy because it allows the market to consolidate, take a breather, and then get ready to launch higher rather than to get on some parabolic move that's just simply unsustainable and would tend to crash out. So to me, the pullback that we've seen over the last year or two has actually been very healthy, and I think that we're going to see a next up move very, very shortly. Some of it's already started even now. But don't higher prices tend to lead to more supply? I mean, there's just more output. As prices go up, you know, producers uh, produce more. Isn't that the case? They do, but there is usually a lag time uh, in that as well. So usually uh, commodities will start taking off and do very, very well, and we'll get pretty lofty before the, the supply really kicks in to, to overtake that and to bring it back down some. How much uh, of a factor is the recent advent of, you know, like ETFs and these instruments that now allow individual investors to get involved with commodities in a way that was not really possible you know, 10, 20 years ago when you had to be a futures trader or, you know, in the physical. Yeah, I think it's huge. Uh, that's what we do in the Ultimate Wealth Report is commodity-related stocks and uh, foreign currency-related stocks and ETFs uh, that track commodities as well. So I think it's allowed a lot of people to come in from the from the mainstream and take infl uh, you know take advantage of assets that will do well uh, as inflation is stoked and inflation goes higher. So I think there's a lot to be said for that. Uh, tons of people have, of course, gone into the GLD, right. uh, for instance, rather than messing with a gold future. Um, and so tons of assets there. It's also, I think, created some uh, some opportunity, though, in things like gold stocks, which have been so beaten down, where stock investors would have normally run to, they've run to GLD uh, instead, and it's created this big disparity. So I think there's so a lot right of bargains there right now. So right now, you would prefer gold stocks as opposed to GLD? Yes, correct. Even though I think GLD is going to break out in the coming months and uh, head back to 1900 to uh, 2000, but I do think that your best, deepest valuations right now and everything that you're going to find is in the gold stocks. Do you, do you prefer to look for stocks in the particular commodity sector as opposed to right away going to an ETF? Uh, sometimes. Uh, it, you know, there's some, sometimes where I, I'm, I'm 
would rather see somebody in the, be in the commodity. In other words, if I think cocoa is going to go up, I would rather be in a cocoa ETF than Nestle because Nestle could be uh, hurt by the higher rising commodity if, if they don't hedge correctly. Um, but but then uh, there's a lot of times where like you can get in something like uh, natural gas, which has been beaten down. So if you go into an Encana uh, that's had a you know four percent plus dividend yield, then you're you're getting some dividend while you wait. You're dealing with a big company, and and so even if it treaded water a little bit before it takes off, you're able to take advantage of the dividend yield. So I like that as well. Well, so you mentioned natural gas, which is an interesting uh, area now because <clears throat> we've seen uh, almost about a fifty percent price rise, but that's coming off very very low levels. Yes. Do you see that as the beginning of an uptrend or is it just, you know, something maybe reaching a little bit higher equilibrium level and staying there? I, I, I think there will be a, a higher equilibrium reached. Um, a lot of natural gas producers have break-even points when they're pulling it out of the ground from, you know, three all the way up to nine. Right. Um, and so I think that... So they're still uh, you, underwater. You, yeah, you're going to see a lot of them have to, you know, have to get that price back up. So rig counts keep going down, down, down to, to, to jack the price up. Uh, I think that you've at least got to get into the fives or a little higher before you're going to get a lot of these guys to where they're actually profitable. Because these guys aren't charity. I mean, they're doing this for money. They're doing it for profit. So they've got to get back above their break evens, or else they're just losing money. So in con, I like because it's it, they've got a break even like in the threes. Right. So they're going to come back into profitability quicker than a lot of their peers. But even Chesapeake said the other day that they want to see uh, uh, natural gas rise up at least into the fives, and I think that's very very doable in the you know coming months, you know months to twelve months ahead. And what about oil? Uh, what's your favorite way of playing the oil market? My favorite way of playing the oil market uh, is is uh, PBR Petrobras, and uh, you know it used the to be Brazilian a darling oil company. Yes, it used to be a darling years ago, and it was it was favored, and and today it's the ugly duckling. Nobody likes it, and they're very down on uh, on Brazil and also on Brazilian oil. So PBR had taken it on the chin. Uh, I believe it presents a lot of value here. Uh, you know, from its uh, book valuation, it's got a ton of cash out there, different dynamics that I like about it. But the biggest thing I like about it is that nobody likes it. Yeah. And so it, it, it's presented at a deep value, and I believe it's mispriced by the market. And I believe in the upcoming one to two years, we'll see Petrobras head much higher uh, as, as oil continues uh, higher as well, both, both uh, WTI and Brent crude. Now, you talked a little bit about China. I mean, you talked about copper, and I wanted to talk about China because it's a very mm -hmm. important factor in copper prices, and we still see uh, an ongoing slowdown in the Chinese economy to the point where it looks like policymakers over there are getting a little bit worried about uh, achieving a soft landing as opposed to a crash. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I would think that given your bullish outlook, you have to look for or you're looking for a China rebound somewhere in there. Is that correct? I, I do believe China and, and India both will rebound uh, in the you know coming year or so ahead. They are still uh, trying to get the boat turned, you know, and they are still probably in the downswing about to plane out. Uh, but there are certain commodities that they're big, heavy players in, such as copper, such as steel, that have uh, started to plane out and bottom out. And I believe uh, that is a telltale sign that we will eventually see China uh, turn this corner. They have pulled back a lot, but they are still growing. There is still growth there. There is still expansion there. And they are still growing far faster than the industrialized world. Right. So I their believe eight, that will, yeah, their that will be a lot of the growth, growth still going is like up. our 1.5% yes. growth over there. But yes. yeah, having said that, I never saw anybody successfully engineer a soft landing. Still waiting to see that happen, uh, but maybe they'll be able to pull it off. Yeah. Um, how about some of the other industrial metals? What's your outlook there? I, I think you're going to see uh, platinum and palladium, and some, <clears throat> some of those do very well. Uh, they've been very beaten down. Uh, I think they're trading a lot of discount to gold, so I, I like them. Nobody's hardly looking that direction these days, and so that's where I tend to like to head. Is where where it seems like the crowd is not um, doesn't feel that it's it's sexy, you know, or, or or enamored by looking that direction. So I like both platinum and palladium. And what about the grains, which have had a huge move? Corn, in particular, crop really decimated by uh, the drought and the heat wave. Um, and you talked about an area where not a lot of people were in, but that was an area where a lot of people are in. Would you stay away from that now and look for a pullback? I, I probably would. It's probably too crowded of a trade right now. I mean, all the media outlets are talking about corn almost on a daily basis, and, and it, sometimes outlets that almost never mention corn. 
Um, so corn, soybeans, wheat, to me, all those are pretty elevated at these levels, a lot of risk. Um, if somebody gets into them, they do need to see a significant pullback before being in them. But I would rather be in assets that hardly nobody finds appealing right, right. now that's at a deep value, that has more upside even than that. Bottom does. line, play it contrarian. Yes. I like that. Sean Hyman, thank you very much. Thank you. That's it for now, folks. This is Mike Norman saying see you next time. Bye-bye.